and then we will spend the rest of the hour and a half talking specifically about prepping for next uh, week's public hearing. It is scheduled for um, um, November 15th at 6.30 in the C Chambers, and it will be televised. So people will be aware of that. Uh, so we'll walk those through this. Um, uh, we also have a public comment section in the beginning, and I see one gentleman sitting in there. Is there anything you'd like to share with this group at this time, or are you just observing? I'm just observing. Okay. Um, is there any other public comment that would like to be made at this moment? Are you um, Ward 3 Association again, or who are you? Uh, North Street Neighborhood Association. That's what I meant, sorry. Yeah. North Street Neighborhood. <laughs> the good guys at North Street are here taking our film again. They have posted their other meetings if people want to go back and check them out. We appreciate North Street taking the time and making this a priority. Um, so, Gail, the way we've been going through this, these sections, so you can see that we're finishing up in the executive branch, which is in the packet under the agenda. We just we got to three and five, which I'm having trouble finding. But we'll talk about that. Um, we we uh, basically are just sort of read through them, decide is there any questions we have for you to find out any information. We are not making decisions. We are just collecting information. Um, to make sure that we um, uh, have the information we need to eventually make a decision down the road. Uh, we are waiting until next week's public hearing. We have started listing some questions for that public hearing that we will uh, further elaborate on in the second part of this agenda. And then next week we will ask people to, to come and comment on that. Either submit written comments directly to Mary or to, uh, for us, uh, at the particular forum. And we have a strategy of how that forum is going to be conducted uh, that we'll talk about then. So we're just look, going through, we're going to try to make it through some of these so we can get, if there are feedback we want from the public, we can get as many of those onto the public roster as possible. Our goal is to finish somewhere around mid-January, which means we have to kind of keep moving along. Our, um, uh, Stop person, as you know, is Mary, who's been doing a wonderful job and we'll approve minutes at the end of this meeting. Uh, but Steve is home with cold. So he called and said, I'm sorry, I don't want to contend with anybody. I said, works for me. <laughs> so uh, this is a time we can change everything around since he's not going to work very much. Uh, but let's start with section 3.5 and communication specifically around the concept of a special meeting. Um, and then again, is in your packet if you want to take a look at it. If there's anything you don't understand or have questions about, we can get back to you or whatever. But uh, again, we'll invite the public to comment on all of the sections, but we're going to highlight uh, some of the areas that we feel are most pertinent to uh, for discussion. Any questions that people have, any comments that they have on section 3 class? Uh, what, what does she do now? Uh, or she, sorry, what does the mayor do now um, if there's a problem? They can call a special meeting. They can call, they can meeting. call it anyway. So this basically is what is, hasn't changed much from what the original charter said. That was sort of my gut was that, that it was a very similar to what I okay. had. Go for In the first section here, are there any um, requirements for the mayor to report, um, especially just the mayor shall, from time to time, by written communication, keep the city council fully informed of the financial administrative condition of the city. Like, they just can occasionally tell the city council. They have a fiscal committee that meets on a regular basis, but again, that's set up as a procedure, not necessarily a charter. Okay. We don't have the so required. Okay. Um, the, the um, only the odd number of pages. But then it was, I think mean, we corrected that with a later email that had them all. Mm -hmm. Good. I hope you want to move that to the Oh, yeah, you last one. It's actually attached to your October 26 notes. But I'm missing page. Yeah, yeah. I'm missing four, six, pages four and six. I'm the same. Okay, I've got five by six. <laughs> I'm missing well, two four and six. Well, you're missing five because six is on the back of five. 
No, this back at 71 back at the Are we still in section three? No, we're in section yeah. three. Okay. Right. If you give me about two minutes, I can go make copies. Okay. I've got I <coughs> mine go one, three, five, seven. Is that what you all have? I'm the same. I, I have it Thank you, ma'am. There is one difference from what's in there now. Yeah. The 30-day deadline for council action, the um, current charter also allows separate treatment of distinct subjects. Okay. Work that out a little bit for, for us, Mark. What are you talking about? Um, in 3-6, in, yeah. in 30 days, we may return to check in, consider. That new, it's just, this is the old charter. A lot of these things were not clearly delineated. So this would be new. It is technically a substantive change. But it's not one that's really, you know, somebody's going to really want to sleep over. Yeah. It's putting a 30 day timeline on it. Yeah. Which is probably a good idea because it gives you something that, you know, you have to act. You have to act for the next exactly. period of time. Yeah. Moving then into 3-6, this is the veto piece, and then Mark, you feel that it's, it's uh, the cleanup of the language there is a better format than the original charter. And it was an improvement of the original charter. <laughs> yeah. And it does put in the 30-day timeline. We're all comfortable with that? Again, these are things we, can, we will be voting on later, but just so people, if they have questions, we can get a background to them. Now here's the one that's probably going to be um, and should be flagged probably for some public is it obviously made some issues this time around. The temporary absence of the mayor, acting power of the mayor, anybody have anything in there? 
um, all the way through the vacancy of the mayor, president of the council to serve as mayor, and the power of the of office. So I'll give you a few seconds just to refresh your memory on those pages, which is five, six, and seven. And if you have any questions, we can talk about that. Any problems or issues? Who declares a, a sickness or other cause? And this say that it could be a coup. City council decides we're declaring the mayor sick. <laughs> There's nothing here that says, well, I'm, I'm not sick. I, I, I'll keep on serving. When I mean, you have tricky problems there, what if you know, the mayor goes into a coma? The mayor or herself could not declare, I'm in a coma now. Should I'm sick. <laughs> Should have a proxy, I'm sure. I'm but sure. but you get, so you, get, so you get borderline cases of mental incapacity that that's are true. not so clear cut. Right. That's true. So let's just flag that as an area that we need to sort out or clarify and um, see if there is any rule um, or protocol that other towns have adopted through Steve um, when he returns with us. But that certainly is an area that I think is. Um, just one question. When, when uh, Claire had her yeah. brain surgery, or the, um, what was the protocol then? They must have had something in place for even the worst case scenario at that point. Right. But they can act as mayor served then, right? Michael served. Yeah. Michael right. served as, as uh, mayor at that point in time for her time that she was out. So something must have been in place, and we're going to need to, to clean that up or figure that out for her. Does that work for you, May? It wouldn't be the same thing that was in place just now that made But it, it, I think the point that Mark was making was the capacity issue and how do you define capacity, who defines the capacity piece. Well, the, the thing I was going to or other cause, unable to perform the duties of the office. Majority of the council, kind of we declare you unable to perform the duties of the office. Right? We're taking over. So that could lead to a coup. <laughs> Radicals that we all are. <laughs> Back to the barracks. Well, something that brings the interesting point about some clerks in some town don't even show up for work. I mean, the council must have the ability to step in and say the mayor's not up to the job or you're not fit. Is there? But remember, there's, there's no requirement in, any, in our old charter, even in the new charter, we're proposing that the mayor show up 40 hours a week or anything. If you're in a situation where city council says you're mentally unfit for carrying your duties, the city council is now acting mayor, and the mayor is saying, what are you talking about? I'm just fine. I'm still mayor. Um, would I go to the court? Mm -hmm. <coughs> is that, if there's a dispute like that, is there a way that that's adjudicated? I don't want to necessarily put her on the spot. Gail? <laughs> 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 yeah. um, are you comfortable with that type of a language in there? As a, From your sitting on the bench, if you were all of a sudden a charter, I mean, a, a city council could come forward and say that Dave Stevens is no longer fit to be mayor, and I can test that. Does that need to be cleaned up a little bit in there? The way that well, it may need to be cleaned up. I am not aware of any specific way that they, that people could bring this to a court. I mean, it may, it may end up there on some yeah. level, but I don't think that it would. I, I can't see that. Can you from your background that you? But uh, going to, to Mark's point, <laughs> if, if the council. Six people on the council decide, you know, Dave Stevens is a drunk. Dave Stevens is right. Alzheimer's. Dave Stevens is incompetent. Incompetent. Right. Just a simple incompetent I mean, you're making bad decisions. decisions. I mean, yeah. that's the part where where does that line? I mean, you you could actually you could write that in. You could give the council that power to say, if we see a psychiatrist, if we you're out to lunch, where we we take you out, and we have the, we have a constitutional charter right to do that. Is it there or is it in a real I mean, it's, I mean, it's not there now. No, no. is it there or is oh, it in a real place? Position? Is there another place that would be appropriate? Right. Is there any recall? Yeah, that, that's the, later in the uh, yeah. discussion. We don't have recall now. That could be later. It could be later. I mean, that would be the proper yeah. method, yeah. it seems to yeah. me, rather than yeah. having a vote on the city council. A vote on it. I don't think it can <laughs> but, if you, yeah. it, but if you write in the, I mean, right now in the U.S. Constitution, it's here, it's high crimes and misdemeanors right. for impeachment. Congress can define whatever that is if they so choose. Right. No one can say that's not a misdemeanor. If they want to call it a misdemeanor, they can. They have. They've impeached for all sorts of crazy reasons. Right. So you could leave it vague in the recall part 
So if they just say we don't like you, it's two thirds or three quarters or yeah, right. or whatever. I think the, the thing let's go over here. Uh, Red side stand up and then Mark and then Maddie. I think that for six councilors to get up and say that the mayor is incompetent or mental having mental problems. They just can't do that unless they're certified psychiatrists or doctors. They can't do that. The recall, I think, is the uh, the obvious way. Then then they can move the mayor that way. But you got to have an awful lot of uh, guts to stand up against the mayor. I think you're great. And people say that in public all the time. I think the mayor is nuts. You know, but yeah, I think the recall will be the way. And and Mark, I would just say that it doesn't say who would activate this. I mean, that's what seems to be lost. Not the mayor then would designate the president of the city council. It's this sort of passive language. Yeah, he's the subject of that. Yeah. 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 And okay. then you also bring up the point, which could be totally legitimate, like you know somebody has an, an accident or something, right. and they're not able to sign off. Dec yeah, exactly. Yeah, Claire could sign off because she knew she was going to surgery. Uh, yeah, there's no active. Mark? Yeah, I, I'm sorry to just step back a little bit from what I was saying before. Because this is still under the temporary absence of the mayor, right. so we're not talking about you know, impeachment. Right. Um, right. But this, the only other thing I was shall be unable to perform the duties of office. It's not even an issue of sickness or, or mental incapacity. Right. It's just an issue of, look, he's an impasse. He's not getting labor negotiations done. You know, We think he's unable to perform the duties of the office. Therefore, we want to throw him out. But if we can establish that this is not for that broader clause, you know, but it really is aimed at just temporary absence because of illness, you know, or so on. How do they can say you are? At, I think you're temporarily sick for a very long time and not really. Yeah, right. yeah, I could see how it's disputed even on absence from the city. If somebody has, you know, the mayor is called out of town over and over on a family problem or something, you know, and people are angry. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean. The, the, the clause, the mayor shall be unable to perform the duties of office, is the effect of this. It's not the cause of this. It's, it's The first part of it is whenever by reason of sickness, absence from the city, or other cause. So yeah, I think the murkiness is in other cause, yeah, other cause, not in whether the mayor can perform the duties of office. I mean, there, there, there may be a whole bunch of other causes that would cause you this kind of uh, worry. But I don't think that the way this is written, that somebody could just come in and say, the mayor is unable to perform the duties. There would have to be something that it linked to sickness, absence, or something. And if the guys would think it's stubborn, don't, you know? It's well, <laughs> and, and it may be, yeah, so we should ask I mean, we, we have a neighboring city, which I'm not going to mention, but where right now the city council and the newly reelected mayor have been at war with each other, including with the city clerk. And you know, I, I can't imagine them, I mean, it's, that would be almost an impeachment to say that. So I don't think it should be there. I think it should be on the recall piece of it if you're going to go and do that. So I just, I, okay. The other thing is that you only gain, whoever becomes the acting mayor here gains only the power, I don't mean to minimize this because it's a big power, but gains only the power to do those things that are indispensable for the city. It, it, it doesn't give it's that a person power, the, yeah. pl the plenary power of the mayor. So we've raised some concerns. Will we visit this when we get around to it? Um, will we go through this a second time and start making votes on it? It'll be interesting to see if this does come up in the discussion um, at the public hearing. Moving forward, um, powers of the acting mayor, Delegation of the authority by the mayor, of the, uh, but let's just do powers the acting mayor. Is there any questions or issues on that? People need to gather information on. The next section is 3 8 delegation of the authority of the mayor. We keep reading through there. Just, um, Please. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm remembering this right, but is there a definition section that starts this charter? Somewhere I read definitions, and I can't remember where I read them. But I was wondering if disability is anywhere defined, because they now use the word disability here in this paragraph. 
which they didn't use in the previous paragraph, and that may help us. If somebody would put their mind to defining disability, it may help your concern. I, I'm not sure if this is Let's just circle that and get, um, come back and take a look at that piece of it. I was also actually wondering about the definitions of terms when they were talking about emergency under section 35. Um, well, that's where my note is about it. <laughs> They're just talking about what happens in the event of emergency. Uh, I can try and talk to you. Yeah, yeah. Just wondering what constitutes. This is a question about the acting mayor too. Is this uh, when when Mayor Higgins resigned, resigned, retired, and David Arbus took over? Was were his powers as acting mayor constrained, or consistent with this clause B? I don't know. That's a good question. Is that anything else? Yeah. 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 Says unless the the thing came like unless the absence of the mayor shows them beyond sixty days, so there's a period of time oh, where yeah. if it's an extended yeah. absence, then you have more power. But I don't know if that's what the current charter says. What else? The future coup concern. Yeah, looks like that. When David took over for the mayor, did he have the option of being paid, you know, like, like basically per diem for that time that he spent as mayor? Because he, he took no money. But I heard somebody said that he had, he could have, but he chose not to. I thought we talked about this last last week or two weeks ago, or two weeks ago. But so you know, it was vague in the current charter, so you could argue that he could have okay. taken both salaries, although he didn't. But you, you, you could have made an argument that he. Had, he but it's not saying to him. Yeah. What's germane to the, this conversation is if that were to happen again, right. should that person go that? So we, it's not vague. Right. Should that person then be entitled to the full salary for the period of time that they are acting mayor? And that's something that we should make sure is clear in this discussion. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. And what if what if someone like an acting mayor would do? That salary. That's fine. Anybody can decline the salary. Yeah. Anybody can decline the salary. It's just a matter of. You think. But you know, if we're going to think about the salary connected to that acting mayor, we should just remember that the acting mayor doesn't have full powers. Right. So let's make sure that when we revisit this. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of an active mayor who might have another job yeah, that's right. and yeah. has to take a leave of absence from that job to do this job. And draws no salary. Right. And so there, there could be some confusion, or do we want and think that for an extended period of time that that acting mayor is only working a couple hours a week? I mean, that, you know, are we assuming that that person is taking this as a full time job if they're acting? Yeah, I, I think there was an exception, though, that rule we talked about before that the mayor can't have some active engagement in some other job. That didn't apply to somebody who was in the position of acting mayor. Mm -hmm. so, I think it was a, so that might not be as critical an issue. I was thinking more how would that person support themselves? I mean, if they were, if they were then the acting mayor, and if that was a full-time duties, even without all the power of the office, and then there was only the $5,000 stipend or whatever attached to it, that could be a pretty onerous burden on someone. 
But you could do something. Oh, sir. Plus the fact that in the case that we just went through, we knew that the mayor wasn't coming back. That was very specific that, that, that David was going to finish the term, regardless of whether he was reelected or not. So, I mean, you're right. That would be a huge burden on someone. But I suppose when you go into this, you, you hope everybody stays healthy and, you know, things go on smooth, but it doesn't always. Yeah, it, it's you could do a provision where uh, if the city council president chose not to take the acting mayor position for an extended period of time, that the council can choose to elect one other member of the council amongst themselves to serve the role of acting mayor. There's some escape hatch, like, right. I, just can't, I just can't do this. Well, maybe you shouldn't be city council president then, if you aren't prepared to take that. You shouldn't, but. But you can always resign that position right. if you elect a new president. Right. Which I think is better for us that way. You know, the person can't do it, they have to resign as president and then let it go. I just yeah, that's, a, that's well, it's, 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 sort of, it's sort of the same. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same body, right? right? Without the one extra yeah. step, right? Yeah. Okay, um, delegation of authority, the 3.8, I, I sort of went through that. I didn't see anything that jumped out at me. Does anybody else have issues on that? And then this is the, the fun one. Vacancy of the mayor. The special election will be held within 90 days. Fill the balance of the term. They don't have to hold it if it's 120 days out. Is this the same as we currently have it? Uh, Bill, Mark, I mean, I'll talk to you on that. Um, just when, when I look at this, they, the only, this is one of those areas where it, there wasn't a lot of stuff about these contingency plans. The one that I had found was the um, calls for the council president to call, fill a vacancy in the mayor's office, but it doesn't stipulate the time frame for the special elections. Now, remember that our charter was written in 1887 when the mayor's job was called the time. It has never been successfully revised since then. So now that we have a full-time mayor, yeah. that's the, one of the reasons we want to revise the charter is there are certain things that really do need to be institutionalized within this document, um, including... Doesn't this answer the coup concerns? You can only coup for 90 days or 120 days. <laughs> <laughs> Which is for any reason that the mayor's the, the position is vacant, including capacity. When does the term start? Is that in January? Or January. So 120 days would be mid-September? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Labor Day-ish. And when did Claire? Labor Day-ish. Okay. So it was a count back of 120 days? I don't know if that was exactly January when she did it or okay. why she did it on that day. I don't know. All right, um, so again, this is a proposal. Take a look at it, see if you feel comfortable with it, what's your comfort level. This, I'm sure, is going to generate some public discussion. So, okay, what do you think would be uh, a criticism of these specific time frames? Well, um, I don't think it's so much the time frames is the criticism I heard in this last election, and again, it's hard to base it on personalities things that happened here for a charter that might last us 50 years. I'm a little nervous about that concept. But um, it, it was based on the fact that he should have resigned from the city council president to and mayor to run for the, mayor, the other mayorship. It was just wearing the three hats right. was too many. But, I mean, I understand that some people thought the system was gamed. Right. But as far as, as far as the special election part of it goes, right. I mean, there's, I don't see how you can write it in a way that there's no way that anyone could ever game it in any circumstance. Right. Right. Um, so is there something specific about this structure that people are saying that should have been a different structure? It should have been 45 days or 20 days? or is it, Are people saying that as far as you know? Not done work. Because I just don't know how you can even run a special election within the less than 90 days, quite frankly. 
he had to be fair to everybody. Because again, if you have an incumbent, the city council president, if you had any less than that, that would give them a real quick advantage to a newcomer or an outsider. So uh, someone who might not be as publicly known as the president who's always up there running the meetings. You remember, we're looking potentially that the president can be running the meetings. Okay, again, vacancies, take a look at this area. Be interesting to see what comes up next week. Um, president of Council to serve as mayor. Powers and terms of that office. Conscious of time, I just wanted to know. Please make it felt more helpful. When we were looking at the legislative body, did we talk about having a council vice president? Just in the event that the mayor vacates, the council president becomes mayor, should there be a vice council president to step in so that that person is not wearing, I don't know how many hats David was just Well, yeah. I, think, I think what has what germane is you've had always the mayor and the president and one would fill into the other, chances of both being out at the same time are rare. Mm -hmm. But now that you're only going to have the president, potentially, we have decided, potentially if the president is running the meeting, you're right, you might want to look at having that second person just because mm -hmm. stuff happens. Yeah, there's just too much power for one person, really. So, obviously, Mary, if we can make sure that that's incorporated in the minutes about we need to come back and recircle to that area. I'm conscious of time, we asked to put it on half the side to make sure we were vetted and all of that. We have completed what I believe is section three, the reviews of section three. We did not get on to um, the administration organization of financial procedures, a more dry section of the charter. Uh, but I think it talks a little bit of Megan about some of the things you were bringing up. Um, and the section relief on make, uh, make the mechanisms, and there is the two, the petition and the, the uh, referendum, and then the recall. So the petition referendum are distinct, separate vehicles, and then the recall. So uh, I think we do need to raise a question about that for the meeting, because I think that needs to be out there, but we won't have a chance to explore it at this point in time amongst ourselves. Okay? David, there's also one other issue that came up in Article 5, which had to do with uh, primary elections. And um, I think that's an issue that issue just in terms of cost. And we had, I think, uh, Bill had talked about preference voting earlier, and that might be something worth exploring, too. Okay. So um, I'd actually like to make sure that that gets incorporated in more questions, because we know that that is important to a segment of the population here. Um, so hold that thought. and actually start thinking of a way that we can phrase that. Um, so the purpose of what we talked about was to hold this public hearing, to put out there some topic areas that we felt were important. Mary, is that list that we originally started anywhere in our packets? Yes. Yeah. It was on the yeah, oh, October 26th. There's also the formal notice packet. Yeah, yeah. Which, is, which is in here. Bill, you want to walk us through some of the stuff you had figured out to, to publicize this and get the word out? So are, are we walking through the yeah. public form notice? Yeah. All right. um, so everyone saw the draft news release that I stepped out to. Um, so basically, uh, as far as the, the, the media push goes, I was really trying to hit hard the mayoral power and short limits concepts. I think those are the ones that are going to people out. The most, um, but I want to make sure all the issues here will reflect in the, in the release, so there's no discrepancies. Um, uh, as far as how we do the actual meeting itself, I would think you want to uh, have so we have again three hours budgeted. Yes. Um, 
we want to have some time at the end, I think, where we miss public comment. Uh, maybe a half hour of time, half hour of time. Okay. Um, that gives you two and a half hours, uh, 150 minutes. Um, we have five broad topic areas, though I don't think, probably don't need to have to be, be equivalently distributed in time, because... So now, before you stop at the five, let me just interrupt yeah. you and say, are these the only five that we want to have out there? Is it too late to change it because it's already public notice? We can add to this. We still have, a, I mean, you only have to have a public notice 48 hours in advance. Yeah, and you said including but not limited to. Correct. Yeah, you say here, excuse me, just since new business is said reserved for topics that the chair did not reasonably right. anticipate. So, so we're we, covered. we can add to that. Okay. So that's where I think the referendum, the recall pieces need to kind of okay. add into a question here of some kind or not. Gotcha. Um, and we're still, again, we're going to reissue this as as we got this out here because it was suggested by the city clerk that we get the advance notice out as quickly as we possibly can, which is why, as opposed to waiting to this meeting, it went out to everybody. But this will be the, the, the final notice, which will actually add to that. That's sort of what I'm envisioning. If people have an issue with that, let's talk about it. But I just thought we could augment that list of five to a couple other areas that we might need, think should be in there. Well, let's just say, for argument's sake, that we, we're adding an election piece yeah. to this. And that gives you six overall topics. Uh, uh, take out 15 minutes for basic introduction. Uh, you got two hours and 15 minutes for six topics. Uh, that is roughly a half hour. You know, 20 minutes and you want plus 15 minutes of overall application here. Right. Um, and again, I think you probably would bump up mayor and city council stuff and take and take down city clerk. Um, and, uh, we also, yeah, we could. Yeah. I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to be. Sure about about this is the whole point of this part of it. We're going to brainstorm how we feel comfortable with this particular hearing going. Right. There, there's a traditional format of a hearing where we sit up there, and we say, okay, everybody sign a piece of paper, and we start in a list, and we just walk them through. We decided that that's an interesting format, but might not work here because we'll be jumping around the charter. So we, <laughs> we thought we would start with sections of the charter and ask for people to comment in those sections. Just update the so she's aware of that. Right. So we started with five sections, and we, we might augment that and add to that list, but right now there are these five sections. And then we'd say, okay, we're, we're focusing now on section one. Boom. And so, so just to try to be a little more lucid <laughs> and coach it. So let's say they're all 20 minutes sections. If we were doing what Mark was suggesting before, and we take the responsibility of doing some basic pro and con. Yeah. Uh, some of the things we've hit around this room, right. some things we've heard. Uh, you know, two minutes each for a side, yeah. as, 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 as much as there are two sides of things, mm -hmm. uh, just to help focus people's attention. Yeah. And then you can open up to the floor and keep people's comments based on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think someone's got to be um, a stern moderator. Um, we gotta, you gotta make sure people aren't giving big giant speeches because there's a lot of ground to cover. Um, I think we can say, you know, if we, we can put people on the clock, it means you got one minute and, and keep it to it. And she has the clock that can go up on the right? Yes, no, we can take minutes. Oh, okay. Okay, I can do the clock. I don't want to do that. I'm sure you saw some of this in some of the you know mayoral city council debates yes. that some people just go yeah. on and on and on and some of that can come up with these. Um, so I don't know if you want to play that role. Well, let's, let's keep Excuse me. The other thing we could do is have your entire agenda up on the screen, right. and then I could do the clock. Right. Okay. Big go. Uh, uh, red, and then Gail. Actually, if, if we're debating ourselves back and forth, that, that kind of defeats the purpose a little bit, though. Public having time to comment on the subject, don't, doesn't it? I mean, you're basically saying, let's say, for example, of paying the city councilors more money. Let's say I'm debating you and I think that they should, and you're saying they shouldn't, and the people are sitting there in their hands. They, I would think that our job is more or less to sit back in general and listen to what they have to say so that we have more information so when we go to vote, we're a little better informed about how they feel because they have, the, they have the vote on it. This isn't just we're going to say this is it. Right. It's going a long way to go before, after it leaves us. So, I'll respond to that. Uh, okay. I mean, okay, that's a, a good point. I don't want to cut 
curtail anybody's opportunity to come and speak otherwise. But uh, there is a, you know, maybe an intermediate spot that would be to uh, just use one of those slides. You know, get you know a single PowerPoint cleanly worded with just you know if it can fit on the slide. Pros and cons. Yeah, just, I mean, that's there's a reason for it, here's a reason against. Okay, to Gail and then back over to them. Well, that's just, I was going to suggest either that on the slide or just have available handouts for each issue pro con on each issue that people read. Either way. Okay, uh, Maddie, talk. Well, I was going to say two things. One is that that actually might expedite the conversation because it would knock out the most obvious consequences. Do you know what I mean? And then people wouldn't have to expound on that. Um, but then the other thing I was going to say that, and I don't really know, I don't know if I miss or whatever, but in talking to people in my neighborhood and stuff about this, people have ideas that are completely unrelated to any of these five things that they want to discuss. Which is the other that, that we set aside by Bill. Like an entirely different form of government for the city of Northampton, and you know, so. And that goes back to your point. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't, I don't, I don't want, you know, I don't, how is that going to interface with? Was there talk, was there talk earlier about having a public comment up front for, or would, would that be tail loaded? Um, it's, 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 I mean, I mean, you can do both, I suppose, but uh, you have, have to have, go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, is that, is that a different, there has to be a miscellaneous space for what's not in our structure. Um, uh, I would think that, if you do it up front, some people are going to pop off about stuff that we're already going to get to. Yes. Uh, if you do it at the end, it just shows we're not going to have any redundancies. Mm -hmm. I, I would just add, in terms of the slide, I like that idea, but I think it would be it's helpful to frame it. But just throwing up pros and cons and bullet points on a screen doesn't really frame it. It might be helpful for someone to say, this is the issue, this is why it comes up. These are the pros and these are the cons. We will welcome your comment. But adding some verbal commentary, at least walk people through the slide uh, so that it's just not a bunch of bullet points that okay. they don't know the context of. Let's see we've kind of common ground here. So we're going to have a slide on, on each of the technical areas. And we say that we want you to address areas of, let's say, of the executive branch, uh, like the term, uh, qualifications, duties, and you know, here are the here are the options. The, the pro and con gets us into the debate issue part of it, which I'm a little uncomfortable with. But here are the potential range of options for people to speak to. All right, you can have a mayor as two years, you can have a mayor as a ten year term. You can, you know, the, the, there's well, well having as a slide, uh, if, if we're doing people speaking, yeah. it would take too long to go through every one thing. Right. If it's on a slide, it gives you a lot more flexibility. Right. So it, it pops up on the screen. There, there is one section. What I had thought I had heard last time is that each of us would take one section, okay, and just sort of be the facilitator for that discussion. So Bill will take executive as an example, and the screen will pop up. Bill will say, "Okay, I want to open this up for discussion," and you will then try to move it along. Um, what I saw potentially, my role as chair is kind of the beat the clock guy, you know that I have to kind of move people like, okay, we're looking for new information now, we're not looking for, you know, if you all concur with it, that's great, but we need to move the conversation forward because we are time limited. And I get to play the bad cop with you. You're the good cop trying to get stuff out. Now, would Bill, he would frame the question, would he, and someone gets up and, and makes a statement, would Bill interface with this person, or would he, we just be listening? Um, I think you would interface if you wanted to gather more information, but not necessarily give opinions, which goes back to the comment you made last time. That we are there to gather information, not to have a public debate. Right, that could get totally out of hand. Yeah. Right. And Mary made a good point in the, in, during the week with some of the correspondence about the forum. That could just it, go on and on. Right. We have three hours locked. Yeah. and Somebody it, says something, and it's like, I'm not clear what, you, what the point you're trying to make. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah. Um, two things. Um, the pro and con may be um, lightning rods for yeah. debate or for uh, for seeing this as a kind of a two way to look at something where it could be where it could actually be much more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. So another way to frame the slides might be benefit and I, I don't love the word detriment, but something that doesn't that doesn't make it seem like a battle, but just that each choice 
gives us some useful things and some Which is using things. the word choices. Right. As opposed to pro and cons, yes. using the more neutral challenge. term of here are the choices yeah. that exist for the executive branch. And then the other thing um, I wanted to suggest was that we, if somebody's looking like they're not going to meet their time frame, that we encourage written comments and say yeah. we'll read everything yeah. we get. And, right, you know, right, right. Yeah. We, we have that built in and it's supposed to be being addressed to Mary, but we didn't, you know, I'll play the bad cop. It's like, okay, I'd like you to kind of write some of that out for us so we can, you know, it's obvious you have a lot to say about this area. Could you put that in writing because we need to, to document that for uh, the decision making process? So we can, we can, you know, but we can say it up front in the meeting. Yes. This is not your one shot. Yes. You can write to us. This is the email, this is the mailing address. You come to every public meeting that we have. Um, uh, so we don't get every last thing. You're, it's in the press release that I drafted, so hopefully if that prints it, they'll publish that part of it. Um, so yeah, I think we should, we should hit that at the start, we should hit that at the end. Will there be any, oh, Go ahead, will there be any topics in the draft of the charter that we won't have reviewed as a group before that public meeting? Yeah, that's sort of like the last part of that agenda, tonight's agenda. When you look at tonight's agenda, um, the administration organization financial procedures, which Todd mentioned, and then also the election and system and leave mechanisms, which are the uh, nomination election procedures. Do we have a preliminary, not a preliminary? And do we have the uh, petition, uh, the initiative, or referendum, and the recall? And we haven't had a chance to really talk about that amongst ourselves, but I still think that we need to put a question there because we do want to solicit opinions about that. Because there's not going to be another public meeting. At this point, we're not envisioning one. There will always be a public comment before our meetings, but we're not envisioning potentially that before we start making decisions. Okay, the whole point is we need to start making it. Our timeline is by mid-January, we have to have something. So we're really pushing ourselves up against the back, back wall here, and um, I think that if we get as much information as we can, try to get as much of it into writing for people who are um, uh, would like to write long narratives, um, then we will have a chance to review that and start making our decisions in the later half of November into December. And then my thought was that we would probably have another, here's the document that we're floating as near or a draft, near final, what do people think about it? And then the people would have another chance, but we haven't had even that conversation among ourselves. That there would be a second public hearing with a final document. The only reason I asked the question was that as I read the minutes of the two meetings that I missed and I see how many ideas and comments came up from the group, and if you don't have the chance to do that, it's a little harder to frame yeah. the uh, benefits and right. challenges. Right. I understand that. Mark? Uh, one logistics question. Given that a PowerPoint slide really can only put so much on one of them, is there room in the city council chamber to have more than one slide up at a time? Can you get that on the front wall? And plus, would that interfere with the clock? Well, I'm, I'm, you know, the projected yeah. clock that you can see. Can we do handouts as well as slides? Is that crazy? Oh, yeah. Didn't Mary have a clock built into your computer screen so it just gets projected up there with whatever else? Yeah, you can, you can logistically under PowerPoint show more than one slide at a time. It just needs to be smaller. It's just oh, a simple thing. Okay, sure. so right. You want to. You really wanted to go and make it yeah. clear. Can we throw up a couple more screens and get a couple more projectors? That might be helpful if it's on TV as well, and the camera has something to sort of focus on. It's not just talking heads. Yes, I'm sure we can make that option happen. I just also want to make sure that we're not having long narratives that are going on in the room, um, you know, framing the questions, because by the time somebody starts reading the whole thing, it's a lot to absorb. It's a lot to absorb. It's a 20 minute period. Yeah. Read all this and comment, go. You know, I just, I just. Well, I was envisioning more like, you know, 15 sentences, 15 sentences on, you know, 15 I, documents. I understand it. And I think the logistic you know, piece of that we have to take a look at. Okay. I think we should also emphasize after, at the end of the meeting that the rest of the meetings, they're welcome to come. They're public right. meetings. If they have anything more to say, and maybe more people will come, said this fine gentleman here. You know, I think, you know, 
it must be new material too. And thinking about framing this, the, the audience isn't going to have these questions before they arrive. The people that arrive are going to have something presumably they want to say, and having all of this framed discussion may not you know, suit their style. Um, so I'm just Which is why, why again, I think we should build this work on the press release that if they have something specific, they can submit it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, so how, how and were we calling this a public forum? That's what we, we went with. It's called a public hearing. Mm -hmm. well, that's what this is. Right. Which is a, a public <laughs> hearing is different than a public forum. This is a public forum, so we are we can structure it differently than a public hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, so if people do submit things in writing, I, I mean, what is the context in which we're going to really be reading those and reviewing them? I mean, we're not going to have a discussion about every I think that that, to me, to me, would be the background information that I would do wading through over the Thanksgiving holidays or the church we do when we could. Um, you know, we would wade through that, and then, for instance, if I, when we're, we're having the discussion, and hopefully we reach consensus, but when I'm trying to persuade people to my point of view, I might pull okay. out, by the way, okay. I took an interesting note of this email that okay. said this thing as opposed to wading through. So it'll just inform our own discussion when we get down to the brass. And you can quote it freely as you need to quote it. And it will be posted, correct? Is that what the game plan is? Mm -hmm. Are we going to post all these comments somewhere? <laughs> I love that she gives me that. What's crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, um, they, we include the minutes, right? Yeah. What I've been doing is attaching two minutes. Okay. That's not good. That's not good. That's not good. That's not good. That's just a lot of work. Yeah, she gave me that one of those <laughs> Is it too early to talk about how we're going to vote on it in case that question comes up? In other words, when, when we're having like our last couple of meetings and we're deciding, okay, this is, we like this, this is what we're going to put forward. I mean, the majority the rules. Yes, yeah, Stephen introduced the concept of uh, um, uh, trying to reach consensus as opposed to voting, but recognizing voting as with our last. Mm -hmm. So that we're all, and even if you if you don't agree slightly, you, you because the United Front is what we really want, because we got to sell this like crazy, yeah. or all this is going to be. <coughs> if we start having minority reports and the issues, we might have problems with uh, pieces. And again, we're trying to get. What we feel is the best package through. It might not accomplish everything that we personally feel, right. but it's a package. And as we saw in Holyoke, that there are parts of the package that we have to make sure are fully detailed and uh, vetted because there will be part portion of the community might be pro on different parts of that package and may vote the entire our entire package down because they don't like one sentence. I don't know if Steve, Steve probably knows this, but there are some methods that you can use for the reaching of consensus. And there's a, there's a sort of a five part one, one of which is I can live with this. You know, it's not my favorite thing, but I can live with this. And if you get that kind of a, yeah. a sense around the table, I'll try to put my hands on that. Yeah, that would be great. Bill? I think, I think if it comes up, I think you can just say just that. We're, we're trying to operate a consensus based system. Wow. Um, we may take votes if necessary. But our intention is to have a final document that fully makes sense. Okay. So let's just regroup. We have about an hour left to kind of think our way through this. But right now we have the idea that there'll be an introduction. We welcome people here. Um, we welcome written comment for those people who want to make sure that we capture the full essence of what they want to share with us. This is a public forum, and we will be walking through questions in a certain format. That format will include walking through some questions and putting some slides up. Those slides will give us um, uh, choices, I think is the word we're going to use as opposed to pro and cons. Uh, those, the, the range of choices that could potentially be out there. We're going to take them one at a time, one area at a time, one of these topics at a time, and ask people to speak within that topic base. Um, they will then walk through these five plus that we add to this more. We will um, 
each of you will take one of these areas, hopefully, um, and we'll facilitate that conversation. I'll play the bad cop and say, time's up, you need to move on, you can put that in writing, whatever, just so we keep the conversation flowing and with the clock in mind. Um, whether we give people three minutes or one minute or whatever is going to depend on how many people are in the room. I mean, if there's five people in the room, if there are 500 people in the room, you know. Now, the only other question I had was, um, do we want to do any type of even polling? Just quick down the dirty polling. Some people might say, let's just use um, two or four years. There are several people who already spoke on the four-year term. There are several people who spoke on the two-year term. Um, does anybody have any new information they want to add? Um, and let's just take a quick sense of the group that are here. How many people feel that you know it should be the people who came out tonight because they wanted to say something about our charter? How many people in this room feel that it should be four years? How many people should be two years? Dangerous. Dangerous. Because we talked about this last time. I'm just researching. I mean, we can't we can't know if we're getting a real cross section of the kind of memory, right. and a polling might make give the impression that we do. And then do we? If what happens if we come on the decision against the polling? It works. Right. Okay. So I just I just want to make sure that we decided that's not the direction we're going in. Okay. So we're going to try to get people to put in. I'll stop at the. Anybody have any new information? Because we need to move on. And we'd ask you to submit that in writing. Comfortable with that? I get, I mean, the bad cop role is not fun here. Because we have to, if we're moving, we have to keep it moving. And once we've heard a few positions in one area, some, you know, we've got two or three people in four years, two or three people talking about two years, we need to move on because there's a lot of other things within that executive powers that we need to talk about. Plus, we have X number of other topics. We all there? Does, does, say there are five people that show up. Yeah. Does, does each person have the right to stand up and speak for three minutes about topic or is, is it open-ended in terms of their I think there will be probably we'll have to put time limits on but to me it's almost a matter of who shows up okay you know I, I, I again if, if we have five people in the room and there are five city councilors and a couple of the mayors or something you know but if we have 500 people in the room it changes the dynamic and we won't know that until we try to conduct this meeting this is going to be <coughs> see your pants at that particular night yeah. But could one of our um, sort of approaches to this be that we want to give as many people a chance to say something yes. and be heard, yes. and then the others who have spoken already, those we especially encourage to send written stuff in on different yeah. topics. Correct. Because I, I agree with that because, um, you know, a city council person or a former mayor might even be in a better position to submit persuasive written materials to this committee versus just, you know, Joe Public who can come that one night and speak on a topic. Do you know what I mean? So um, I, I guess I just feel like um, I don't want to, I, I know that obviously people that have been in government have um, special expertise that we want to acknowledge, but at the same time I don't think that they should um, somehow dominate or we should defer to them. To be candid, and I don't mind with the camera going behind my head, um, <laughs> they all, all the current elected officials have a vested interest in how this power, just it is the true. power structure, comes out. Mm -hmm. And this is a people's decision on that, which is what I think Maddie was saying. So um, I appreciate that they'll be there, but unlike other hearings or public hearing, where we would recognize those elected officials first on the agenda, mm -hmm. I would argue that that's not what we're here for. Is there, would it be politic to alert them? Yes, we have done that already. The notice has gone out to... Or, I mean, that, the, that we're going to try to hear from the public not connected with government as much as we can, and then encourage people connected with government to use their expertise to inform us in writing to the greatest extent possible. What do you think? That, I don't know if that's nasty or good. Too, but I mean, has a background in, in public relations, so sorry, I keep yeah. referring to him. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, this is probably more a question of you know political social etiquette, which maybe not my expertise, but uh, I don't know if they need like a special handhold or like you're not going to be treated like the king and queen at this hearing. Um, you know, they should. I would think they would know it's a public forum, they're from the public, and you know they they're a citizen, they can come and speak to the citizen. 
Um, I mean, if, I mean, I think we all should be talking to our counselors and the, and the at-large folks. Let them know that we're doing this. Get them to get the word out to their constituencies. And I did send a note to Michael and to David. Mm -hmm. Just so it's on the calendar. Great. Those, and as Mary did with, I'm sure with the city council and the other elected officials, just so it's on people's calendar. And I was just thinking that in the course of those conversations, if if someone's asking for something special, uh, you have to say, look, this is this is about hearing from the public, and we're going to make sure everyone who's got their hand up gets called on. Uh, we can't give any special time for speeches from anyone. Period. Not even from us. I know the charter has to go to the council and then is voted on by the by the broader population. Is there a concern that we also have to sell this to the council as well, or is the council likely just to pass it on to the? To the oh members? no, I think we have to understand that that the nine people who will be sworn in in January are going to have an up or down vote on this. Now, I think there has been concern: is does it go through their? Mary, help me out the name of the committee. Um, ordinance. ordinance. Thank you. Ordinance committee, does it go through the ordinance committee and do they redo the process all over again and make changes, or do they get an up or down vote on that? That has not been decided and or is not a hard decision to make. That is the city council's decision to make. Um, so if there's something in here that they don't particularly like, they can sit on it. Or veto it. Or veto it. Or just, it or just stall yeah. it. Okay. Because they have to approve the charter uh, that goes to the legislature, who then has to approve it to get it on our ballot. So there are, you know, we're just sort of, I want to say the first step, but we're sort of the second step that we talked did earlier, you know. And we're just trying to move the ball forward on this particular issue. But so they would have the right to amend. They wouldn't have to take it as an up or down. They don't want to. I, I, they, that has not been fully discussed or, or determined. And I just, but, 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 so just to, just to get back to structure of the form, yeah. so should we get down to brass tacks and start doing out assignments That's to people? That's exactly where I'm going next. And I want to first look at the list. We have five areas up already here. All right. Uh, the city council school, there's a change. Uh, ward council is at large, um, elected for two or four years. School committee term limits. In one whole area. Okay. We have another area around compensation and benefits. We have another area around the mayor. Um, uh, we then have a fourth area about the mayor's duties, which is city council and school committee meetings presiding over them. And then we have talked about the city clerk to be elected. Um, that sounds to be a definitive list because we have some a few other areas that we can come up that we need to put on there. But is that what people remember from the past? Okay. I would, if, if we were talking about order at the hearing, I would bump up. I, I put the two mayor things above the benefits and compensation. I might put the mayor's from the, the number one, too. So that people can leave. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Oh. No, I, I, <laughs> exactly true. I, and I, think, I think people will come and they want to weigh in on that. That's going to break people out. Yeah, exactly. Are we sure that this second one, the compensation, is something that is the function of the charter? It is a way to put it into the charter so people don't have to vote on it the first time. We're not required to do that, is what Stephen has suggested we, we strongly consider. Okay. Because, for instance, if we were to change the mayor's salary, which he feels is very low, it's very difficult to do it in other mechanisms. But if you started in the charter, that the, the beginning in 2013, the mayor's salary will be X, and it will go up from there according to this procedure. That's what I remember Stephen saying. Is that in the ballpark what other people heard? Yeah, I remember that. But there's also the issue, like, which came from the first meeting about benefits, right. and transparency, and equity of payment for those who are correct. Um, and then also the, the concept around should the city councilors who are getting five thousand dollars should that go up and should that be just a sole flat X dollars with no benefits or should there be okay? So that was sort of tied into one. So looking at this list of five, 
are there other areas that people feel we could get, and specifically the ones, the areas that I think are going to come up are the, the two petition, uh, the ways you can uh, uh, submit petitions, and then also the recall concept. I think that that's just an area that we'll get discussion. Or I would like to at least have people have the ability of discussion. I, I, I agree with that. Also, I think the, the primary issue. I, I guess I look at it more as a as a financial burden. The way it's written in the current template requires the preliminary elections, and, and um, I know in the past that's been a financial burden for the city. And I thought there are alternative ways to to avoid that burden. Okay. All right. So. Uh, that would be six and seven. If you go to your first page of the agenda, number four, there are two bullets. And one is six, and now one is seven. Okay. I would add in eight the whole concept that we talked about up here in terms of um, the absence of the mayor, delegation of power. And we want to get anywhere in each number on the agenda that says number three, <coughs> and deliver to decide the method of establishing and modifying, or should we just assume that that will get kicked into other if people have a problem getting into that? Yeah, what's, what's number three? Are you putting this on a public forum part? Or? Sure. The potential of adding to the five that are there. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, underneath four, you have two bullets. One would be six, one would be seven. And then the last three bullets of number two of the agenda would be number eight. Am I in the ballpark here? Now you've lost me. We're yeah. 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 on our regular today's agenda. Today's agenda that's here in the packet. Okay? This one that, that uh, was handed out today by Mary. All right. Under number two, there are three bullets. Gotcha. Gotcha. Temporary delegation of authority vacancy. Putting that all together as, as one of the questions. Skipping down to number four, this is the election procedures where we want to also talk about some of the other areas that could be out there in terms of, help me out here, what's the terminology I'm looking for? Preliminary Thank you. elections or primary? I think I, I think the common term would be primary elections. It's preliminary because primary or party. Preliminary, gotcha. uh, party. Um, preliminary, and then also the other, the concept that I'm sure will come up because it continues to come up here in the valley of what is your first and second, first and second voting, and that's called preference voting. Okay. And there might be somebody who brings that up. And I just would put that all in that area. And then the other one would be deliberate decided pre-petitions, initiative petitions, referendums, and recalls. Mark. Doesn't one seem a little bit broader? We have two big issues here, the, the number of counselors and the distinction between ward counselors and that large, and then the separate issue of two years or four years. Yeah. Okay, so you're suggesting we break into two. I'm comfortable with that. I just, I just want to yeah. make sure that that, or I quote that was my correctly. suggestion, yes. Okay, two and four, and then uh, have term limits in, that, in the second part of that. Would it be possible to lump terms for the mayor and the council together? Just have a discussion about uh, term lengths yeah. for all officers? Mm -hmm. So we would take the last two sentences of number one. This is going back to Bill's original paragraph of number one. Taking the last two sentences, two questions, and putting them under number three. Are we there? So it's a, it's a term limit, or it's a, it's a term discussion. Term discussion. Yeah. Is it two, four, whatever, for these officers, and should they be limited? Everybody on that same page? Yes. Okay, so we'll combine those two. I think that's a good call. One will go as far as at-large school committee members. Should there be more or less at-large school committee, large councils, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then there would be the school committee and the mayor and the city council, two, four, number of limits, number of terms. And then, uh, okay, we'll reorder these, I know, but I'm just making sure. 
And so we have eight at this point in time that I'm aware of. We in the right ballpark? Mm -hmm. All so right. We have, so we have eight, eight topics. Eight topics and eight people. Right. <laughs> just, just, just to pull back for a second. Yes. It's a three hour meeting. <coughs> if we're going to cordon off a half hour for miscellaneous at the end. Right. You need 15 minutes up top just for basic introduction. Yeah. Two hours, 15 minutes, eight topics. That's how many minutes per topic? Uh, now you have about 12. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, if, if we think that's tight, yeah. do we have to do all these eight? Okay. okay can we use some sizes? We'll get, if people really care, can bring up the miscellaneous. Correct. And the other thing is, um, we could say specifically we would like your input on these following areas to be submitted in writing. Mm -hmm. So we can take take some things off the table because we want to make sure there's enough things for the for those areas. Twelve times eight would get you to eighty one over six. That's an hour and a half. You're an hour and forty five minutes actually. You're ninety minutes and then you're at one oh six, you're at one you're at an hour and forty five minutes. If you take fifteen minutes, a half hour, you have a half hour left over, so it's a little bit more than twelve minutes. Eight, it would give you another two and a half minutes each. What's keeping us from just pulling a late council session and just go and just keep going? Maybe people will leave. Okay. No, yeah. I mean, that, well, that's well, not that's asking. No. <laughs> no. I mean, if, 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 if people came to to talk about mayor and city council, they can do that in the first hour, and they go. I think that's totally fine. Uh, and if we want to give more time for that. And say, you know, these are big topics, they should be 25 minutes each. And then we do it, we, we can handle city clerk left or appoint in a much smaller time frame. I think that's fine. It's um, 17 minutes, roughly 16 minutes, I think, so we should go with um, per topic if you do eight topics all weighted the same. I think we absolutely should talk as little as possible to let them do the talking. Um, and, what, and as far as, let's say, example, the city council um, compensation. Let's say that's mine. Yeah. All right. So it comes up. What is what? Like okay, you're John Q. Public. Uh -huh. So how do I? You're, we know the subject. You're going to get up and you're going to ask a question, and I'm going to answer it, or I'm going to give you my opinion, or I'm going to introduce the topic. Right? Intr just introduce the topic and walk through the slide. You know. Yeah. All right. Like the benefits or the the, the good choices. Of right. Maybe, right. Like, maybe yeah. more candidates will come out and run and. Um, you know, and they haven't got a raise since. And Correct. Currently, the city councilor receives five thousand dollars. The school committee receives this. Mayor receives this. These are the benefits that they may elect to take. Just so people have background information. Right. And, and, say, and that's work. half. Uh, that's 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 half the salary that, on average, throughout the Commonwealth, Correct. we Point. get in Point. cities Point. of this size. Yeah. And that, mm -hmm. that you know, there's documentation that's available. It's up on the website already that shows that this is. At, we are currently at half what the average is for community our size. Boom, done. Okay. Um, do we need to add mayor to number two then? Because it only talks about city council and school committee. I know it's supposed to be like mayor. Yeah. It doesn't hurt to add it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Mary? Um, just on the topic of what Mr. Thompson said about why can't we go over mm -hmm. you know, NCTV for the yeah. maximum of three hours and they also have to do city council on that Thursday of that week so it's not appropriate to ask them to go over late okay. like that okay thank you appreciate it well if we had to say some of these we're not going to cover at this meeting are there some that are obvious ones that could be accommodated by written stuff better than Okay. Does everybody have the aid in front of them so they're aware of their yeah. looking yeah. at them? Yeah. Okay, that's what I was all worried about. Okay, number one, I'm looking off of the public forum thing that Bill put together for us. Should the city council school committee structure change? Should there be more or less ward councilors, at large councilors, school committee members, or at large school committee members? That's the whole point of, we have seven wards, two at large now, that's how we have both of those, do we change that format? Okay. Well, as we're going through this, how much more would we frame it um, around the question as you just, as you 
just tell you there. Um, I think the background that you're, you can not have a precinct more than 4,000 people. I mean, sort of that background. Okay, so there are certain constraints, right? We need to just make sure people were aware. We as a city cannot have one ward. Okay. And that's the email I sent you early on. Okay. Right. But not much more than that. And then for that person to solicit com comments from people. Okay. Who wants to speak to this issue? And then you have your X amount of time and you're going to walk the people through that. And I get to play the bad cop in the background saying you need to move on. Time's clicking. Now, do you want to play bad cop the whole time? Or do you want each of us to take turns playing the bad cop for our topics? I don't mind being the bad cop. It saves you guys from having to do that. I'm all, I'm all for you doing it. <laughs> but three, I know it's, I said three hours is a long time. It's all right. I don't mind being the bad cop. All right. So then that's number one. Number And on these, not in the correct order. This is just what I mean, right. so we can have a sense of this. Should the mayor, city council, school committee compensation benefits uh, increase or decrease? Okay, that's the mayor's salary that's involved. Okay. Should the school committee, city council, mayor be elected to two or four year terms? And should there be term limits? Should the mayor preside over the city council and school committee meetings as current practice? Should the city clerk be elected or appointed? Are, are there other elected officials like the city clerk that would, we could sort of? Yeah. Okay, so it's just the clerk. Just the, the clerk. clerk. Okay. We moved the treasurer out about four years ago, Mary. I think. I think so. I think so. About four years. You, were, you were going to add the two last sentences of one to. Three. Yes, I did. I, I thought. Should the mayor, and then I just I shortened it up. Should the mayor, city council, school committee, you can just do it there, be elected to two or four year terms, and should there, should that these positions be term limited? Okay, so those are the first five. The sixth, and number five, by the way, I think we'll get to people in the audience on that. Maybe he's already got a list. <laughs> uh, number six, I'm putting as the, in, in, in the no order, deliver to decide on pre petitions, initiative petitions, referendums, and recall provisions. And depending if we have a little bit of time, we might play with a little bit of that. Deliver to decide on the nominations and electoral election procedures. And then number eight, is 37383939, dealing with temporary absences, delegation of authority, and vacancies in the mayor. Okay. Is it crazy to consolidate six and seven? I uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Yes. Yes, it's crazy or yeah, I think that that's just yes. I guess the question I have, which of these topics is going to be sort of the most esoteric and abstract and conducive for written um, I would think the school committee one is a little more technical. I actually think that... I think there's some the stakeholders on each one. Yeah. <coughs> I think number one is going to be one of those that people are going to say, why are we even thinking about it? <coughs> but I think we have to ask that question. Okay. Okay. You know, but I don't think it's a long-winded, I don't think they'll be, I don't imagine they'll be saying, I can almost see actually one and seven going together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 The deliberate and decide about the nomination election procedure. No? That's six. Structural. All right, so we've got eight. Let's order them, and then we figure out how this fits timelines. Which one should be number one? City clerk? <laughs> You're really asking for it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> number one here, that means that's a, it may not lead to a lot of people saying, oh, strong reasons for changing it, but it is so central to, to nature of governance. 
consensus? Are you there? Are you, I think I told you a warm up before May. It's a warm up. I was thinking, I agree. Okay. <laughs> number one will be number one. Yeah. All right. Then we have um, two, three, and four staying right where they are, and five stay where it is. I thought Bill's comment about putting the, the term and term limits up front. Okay. About three, three should be two, yeah. two should be three. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it is. Should we keep the number of wards, if you will, shorthand here? Should the mayor be elected to two or four year terms, city council, et cetera? And then number three is the compensation question. Number four is, does the mayor preside over city council and school committee? Number five is the city clerk. Are you there? Mm -hmm. Mayor, are you keeping up with all this? I'm trying, yeah. Okay, I can help you out if you get too far or you take a break. So all right. Anybody have an order for? I, I would keep all the mayor questions together. Yeah. So kick, kick clerk down one. That probably makes sense. And make number, which we have the old eight, make it number five, which is number. The, the temporary absence of mayor, delegation of mayor, vacancy of mayor mm -hmm. would be number five. <coughs> and then the clerk would be number six. Yeah. The, the seven, uh, why don't we just make that as the nominations and election procedures? And then eight be the recall referendum and uh, petition. There? Comfortable? Yeah, I think it makes sense to keep the recall sort of at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Like keep people lingering in the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> so, one more time just to make sure we're on the bell part. Mary, are you all set? But one is number one, which is should the structure change, change the number of wards, number of people at large, etc. Number two is the, should the mayor, city council, um, school committee be elected to two or four year terms? Should there be two months? Number three um, is the Mayor, School Committee, City Council, Compensation and Benefits. Number four is should the Mayor preside over City Council and School Committee meetings. Number five is the temporary absence, delegation of authority and vacancy of the Mayor. Number six is should the City Clerk be elected. Number seven is delivered on the nomination and election procedures. And number eight is uh, the pre-petition issue, petition, referendum, and recall provisions. Are we there? Mm -hmm. Everybody comfortable? Mm -hmm. All right. <coughs> I need a leader in each of these areas who will not only lead the discussion but will help craft the slide. Going back over the notes, deciding what should be up there that people will visually see when we click to question number one. So what are the historical facts you want to put up there? What are the parameters? That's, that's, that, that's council right in the words. I'm, I'm, I'm the, I'm the schmuck that put this on the agenda, so perhaps I should handle this one. Which one do you want to do? The, the city council and the, word, and, the, and the words. Okay. So Bill will do number one. Okay. Anybody else? Jump, jump in here. I, I'd be happy to work on compensation, but I know that's uh, a lot of people have opinions, and trying to formulate the slides and framing it needs to be a team effort. Okay. Well, we have a chance to just send them around. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got Todd at number three. I could do number two. It's a fun one, though, so somebody else can see that. <laughs> Go ahead, grab your easy one. <laughs> Here, let me throw an anchor in. Okay, Megan. Who else? I'll take whatever you got. Should the mayor preside over city councils? Maddie, you'll do that one? Actually, are we certain we're even going to get to 7 and 8? So 
people just play it on that. <laughs> Sign up for the end one if you find that character. <laughs> <laughs> Which one would you like, Mark? I'll talk to City Clerk. Pardon? I'll do City Clerk. City Clerk? Okay, Gail and Red. The uh, upper M is the mayor, I mean, but it's pretty cut and dry. Okay. Red will do number five. Gail? Um. I don't care. I mean, I'll do either one. I, I don't know. I don't know these because we haven't discussed right. these, so I have no idea about them. Yeah. Um, we'll have a little bit of time because I think we're going to have a little extra time yeah. left and we need to go back to those. Okay. Um, um, you want to pick up the free petition? Well, I'll be happy to do that. Okay. Uh, whatever it is. <laughs> and I'll be happy to work on the uh, preliminary election um, slide as well. Tom, Thomas, by the way, is at, uh, he's doing court case all week, so that's why he unfortunately can't be here. He's in court and tied up. Are you giving him on Mark, can I bump you okay. to seven? All right. Because to be candid, I think they should the city clerk be elected or not would be easy whether Thomas is here or not. Okay. So he can speak to it better than because he, he uses her. Correct. That's a that's a good choice. So I right. just feel comfortable putting Tom there if that's okay. And if he doesn't make it, I think that's an easier one that we can do at the last minute. There's not a lot of detail there so, in terms of homework. All right, everybody has their assignments? Just to, to clarify, is my number one now with or without the term limits? Without the term limits. Okay. You have, should the school committee structure change? Should there be more or less board counselors, at large council school committee, or at large school at large council? Is that the question you wanted? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was what you would raise. So. Okay. And then that's bills. Then um, Megan, you have should there be two or four years for the three bodies, and should they be term limited? Okay. Everybody on board? Yes. Good. How do you, how should we do our slides? Should we all do them in PowerPoint? Should we do them just written out and someone else can print yeah, PowerPoint? Yeah, your verse in PowerPoint. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to warn you. Yeah. I have tomorrow. Tomorrow yeah. is uh, publishing city council. Yeah. Uh, we're off Friday. Yeah. Monday, I have a license commission meeting that starts at four, and an ordinance committee ordinance commission meeting that starts right after that at six. So okay. between that and license renewals, I see no time during the day to do it. Four. Right. Yeah. Okay. You'll be sending the powerpoints to me, and I'll take care of that. So we should do them in powerpoint. Uh, no, do them regular and I'll put them in PowerPoint. I think that'll be easier because everybody's PowerPoints will look differently and they'll be a different face on each one. No flowers, no funny little noises, no little music <laughs> in the background. <laughs> Send me straight text. So you just want, you want text with bullet points? And straight, straight text with bullet points and we can go from there. Yeah. And again, not, not long narratives because people are speed reading this. Right. Yeah. Okay, Megan? Should we share all of our points by like Friday so that we can all... I think, that, put on each other's. I think that's a good thing, is that everybody would pull this together by Friday, circulate them to everybody, have comments on that, all sort it out over the weekend to try to get it tracked to people by like Monday so you can take a look at it. Okay. Um, or we can even take the edits in and then get it back to you again by Monday to see you now. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, so why don't we, that means each of you is responsible for your own bullets. You will send me a final draft on Friday. You will circulate to the other members and ask them to comment. Before, before they go in. I'll be part of that list anyway. Yeah. Okay, and then I'll get the final draft and put it into a PowerPoint. Does that make sense? I, I think I missed a step. I okay. understand. All right, Maddie, you're going to drop me, you're going to create the PowerPoint, or you're going to create the bullet points yeah. for that area. Right. You're going to circulate it to the team. Okay. The team is going to vet that, that for you. Okay. And then you're going to get me the final draft by um, Monday. Okay, so fr the Friday has been eliminated. I was confused. Okay, so 
I do my own thing. You have to get your own thing out to everybody by Friday. No people will have. Okay. Are people free over this weekend? Are yeah. going away or anything crazy? Maybe you're so crazy. Can you get together to me <laughs> Sunday night? Okay. Sunday 6 p.m. You'll get me your final bullets. Is that okay? So you will have these out to everybody by Friday 6 p.m. No. Help me out here with comments. Give me a time on, guys. Bill? All right, so we sent we sent our bullet to everybody by close business Friday. Yeah, by um, Friday. Everyone has to to give comments before the end of the weekend. Yeah. And then so we all have Monday to incorporate feedback. Well, that's not what I'm saying is I need it before it happens. You're really pushing right so you need, So you need done, you need final copy by, by Sunday night, you're saying. That's what I'm hoping for. Okay. So then, uh, then all feedback needs to be uh, exchanged by the end of Saturday. Okay. End of Friday, you circulate. End of Saturday, you feedback. End of Sunday, you have the final bullets to make. Yeah. Okay. Mary is on our list. Yeah. Okay, everybody, it's the same email list you get from everybody to circulate it around. Okay. All right. Boy, this is rushing. Mm. Could, could I ask on those last um, topics, do we have drafts already? Have yes. been sent around? Yeah, that, that's part of the packet we'll get into in just a second. Okay. Um, individual comments. Okay, just to reiterate, Friday you're going to have this all together. Um, uh, 5 p.m. Friday. 5 p.m. Saturday, you can have comments. Should we see, shoot for sooner than Friday? Just it's only Saturday to look at everybody's bullets. Today is Wednesday. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I want to note, yeah. as far as PR goes, we got to spend tomorrow pushing everyone we know about this. That we have a window, we have a post election day window. Yeah. We, have, we have this meeting. We just got from Thursday a.m. It's a Tuesday to get to one that is not, within a holiday week and not a lot of time. Um, so I would strongly urge you, uh, and I'm happy to write some, I have written email, I've written a press release that has been, unless you have major problems with it, you can talk about that. Um, but but uh, I would generally not recommend sending out the press release to an email because no one's going to read it. Yeah. You know, emails can be even shorter than press releases. Uh, and so I'm happy to do some suggested copy for that, and you can obviously tweak it out if you feel it's in your voice, um, but not your counselors, but anyone you know that's a good networker type person or organization heads that you know, former counselors, uh, I mean, there's, there's no bad person to send to if they're good amplifiers. And I would spend as much as Thursday as you can on that. And Tom's going to hook you up with some radio shows that I can do where you can do a Well, I emailed HP this morning, actually, okay. um, and I've not heard back from them, so I was going to call them if they don't respond to me. Um, and I have a broader media list that I'll just give the press release out to tomorrow. That's fine. Go with that. So, something related to that is that Mark and uh, Maddie. Mary, are you going to have a chance to expand this list uh, to cover all the topics that we've discussed? Plan to get on it? Because, I mean, something as blatant and you know, as simple as this to post this up at Cooper's and elsewhere around town where their bulletin boards would be helpful. So the, the point would be can you take that press release and add the extra three and put three orders in the correct number? get that to us. Uh, fine. So we would have that. You could use whatever you need of that. But that will give us the eight topics. Um, there probably needs to be a clause, clause in there at the top. Um, something about we don't try to get these in this order with the idea that we don't get to the end ones. I, I wouldn't sweat too much about procedural details on okay. the promotional push. Okay. You know, you want this to be very clean. Um, uh, just this is what we're talking about. Here's your chance to speak your piece, and we can go over procedures when they get there. Okay. To circle back real quickly to the PowerPoint slides, how many lines in effect do you want? What's our limit? Um, well, that goes back to your point. Is that we have to have one month effect of the one month slide. No. So. Well, are you talking like up in there? You can use big there, fonts. Yeah. And okay. Not, yeah. You know, there's nothing on there. Again, we're not 
Well, and the reason I ask is the compensation issue, there's a lot of data points in there. Mayor salary, counselor salary, school committee salaries, plus benefits, what are those, what's the total cost? Right. But you can say some of those things. Okay, well that, yeah. I didn't know, you know to what extent, or yeah. this is sort of an outline that we're throwing up there, or do we want to put data up, cause, or have a handout so that people can put some meat on the bones? I guess that's the question, how much bones, how much meat? Comments? I think that's going to be a, a, a big subject personally because it's dollars and cents. So well, that's why I thought it might make sense to try to get some data up there, but if we're just doing bullet points, you know, six bullet points, don't really do I agree. Throwing up numbers is a, I think, would look good. It's eye catching and interesting. Plus, you want to make comparisons to other cities and towns. Yeah, well, sure. yeah, yeah. you know, the average is 10,000, while we're way behind the Curve. You can get away with a few key numbers without totally bastardizing the conversation. You do 20 numbers on a slide, it's just yeah. a blizzard. <coughs> Three key numbers is great. I'll try to make it simple and circulate. You, you know, uh, source, and you can source October 26 minutes. You know, that the average the average uh, salary per town size is $10,000. Source, August 26, or October 26 minutes. Um, I don't think you need to go into here 15 towns that have a program. Yeah. Okay. Let them go back to the particular piece and do it. And again, we talked about compensation, that here are the benefits that they can elect to take, period. You know, they can take life, health. Uh, I don't think we need to get into who takes what or, you know, it's like if you're a city council or a school committee or a mayor, here's your benefit package that you can elect to take or not take. Um, just my subject, it, 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 I mean, for the amount of text that's here, it almost just condenses it down and just, it, it wouldn't even take a whole slide. Um, and as far as what I would probably do would be just basically do a quick read through and ask for any comments. Is that what we're, that's what we're aiming to do, and then just shut up and let the people say what they need. Because this is kind of pretty simple stuff about the mayor. The temporary, not as opposed to what happened, but just in case the temp they get sick or goes to some family who's dying and stuff like that. Is that what we're aiming for like that? Just to kind of get it up there, present it, and then let them make their comments. When they're done, we move on to section six. Correct. Okay. I'm filling in the local one at the moment. I'll bet you are. Keep going. So am I. <laughs> Keep going. I just want to say on publicity that Ward 3 Neighborhood Association changed its meeting. So they, all the Ward 3 people can come. Yes. And they sent it on the letter. Somehow I'm getting really scared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think this is just too many subjects for too short a time. Yeah. I think we're putting a burden on ourselves that's really unfair to ourselves, but I think it's going to be unfair to, to the, the speakers because um, even if you minutes. think about leaving some extra time for the glitches that are going to happen in the PowerPoint, because we know that's going to happen, and um, for the setting up of the subject, which is going to cut into that, even if you say it's 14 minutes a piece, it's going to cut into that. And then if three or four people want to talk on a particular subject, you're done. You're, you're done. done. That's right. So I just think we need to um, either <coughs> tell ourselves that we need to fit in another public meeting somewhere and divide this, mm -hmm. or decide which of these things. I mean, I'm quickly reading over the stuff that I'm supposed to, to deal with with them. And, they, they won't have digested. This is lots of pages, lots of words. Okay. Let's let's take your your second point first. Do I have any Throw another one out there in December and pick out the four hot topics, pick out the four lighter topics, stick them for us later on, and let's just get through four of the hot topics this time. Well, one thing that I like about that is that if we we can learn from mistakes at this forum. Very good. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. if, 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 we, if we have difficulty facilitating discussion or we have difficulty shutting people down or whatever it is, or, you know, at least we have a chance to try it again. And I just think that the whole thing about this is that we are balancing these two things of trying to get the best charter that's the most palatable. So there's so much selling involved in it that I just think, you know, if people feel like, oh, there were two hearings, I only went to one, 
it's like, that's better than, do you know what I mean? There's one hearing and I couldn't make it. That makes people like, you know, rigid against it. Mark? Uh, there's maybe another possibility we should consider. And that's that if uh, we went through all, I mean, consider this, if we had, we have these eight subjects. If the eight of us, or were, if it was possible for each of these subjects, spoke for three minutes with their own PowerPoint slides sequentially, and then we broke into eight sections of the room, take our, take our slides or now our, our charts with the dot points, toss them up behind us, and people can come among us, and we have to record the subjects, the comments that come up within respect to our particular subject. So with people, it wouldn't the be The drawback with that is that I would be talking to people about my topic. I wouldn't hear, I wouldn't get the information about the yes. seven other and topics. And it's not all captured it's by like cable. Yeah. Oh. Oh. But it would be noisy because you'd have mmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. mm, all around. But is that necessarily a, a, a you know, fatal? I mean, if you were doing it like a, a, a public discussion about, you know, should the, uh, how should we develop hospital? You know, Wayne Feigen would put a little, develop this little charrette or whatever it is about the, the land use and, and here are the options. And then it would, you know, then he'd want people to come by for public comments. You know, they, they would come to him rather than having just be in the Well, yeah, that's the point them. of having those folks submit stuff to us. Yeah. Okay. Mary, jump in here. I just, I just feel like I have to say this. If, I think that if Wendy Mazen were here, she would say, this is the agenda you posted. Yeah. This is what people expect. And this agrees with open meeting a lot because we posted it in plenty of time. Typically, the, the biggest reason of calling it a forum and not a hearing is that if you call it a hearing, you have to have public hearing posted, I believe it's 15 business days before an event, and we couldn't do that from the last meeting. But by calling it a forum where you're listening to public comments, not taking votes, not making any decisions. Well, that, then again, when we're looking at breaking things in half, mm -hmm. I mean, we have these five here, which we could go ahead with, and then kick the other three to a second hearing, plus anything else that would be there, the other could go to that piece. And, and the other thing of it is, this has been out for two weeks, yeah. and we've mentioned it, I made sure we mentioned it at City Council. We mentioned it at the, at every meeting we've had between October 26th and now, and people have looked and have seen this. Okay, so let's just let's keep going down this path. Without, would the concurrent discussion of multiple subjects be contrary to being a forum? I don't, I'm not sure about that. I see where anything in that, you know, breaking it up and having simultaneous discussions would that conflict with, with this definition. What, my, my sense of the concurrent discussion is that part of the reason, I'll be in the audience listening and getting information that Part of the purpose is to let the public speak, but also to inform us, right. the publics. And, and, and that's, that's, that's to me is the key. That I, want to hear, I want to hear what people have to say. I like going back to Gail's position and picking up on what Mary said about within the legality of the open meeting law. We go with these five. Okay? And then we take the other three plus other, that 30 minutes of other, and that goes into a second meeting. And then we learn from what we, we did right here, if we have to tweak it for the next right. one. But again, I take the point that we're down to 12 minutes and three speakers, and all of a sudden you're done. Where we could give them almost a half hour with five, mm -hmm. you know, because you do a little bit of introduction, everybody gets a half hour. Each of these topics is a half hour, folks. And that's, you know, all we're taking, it. whether you use it or not, then we can move forward. If we have a little bit left over, one topic runs more. Basically, you have a half hour. And then we say to folks, thank you very much. On X day in December, we're going to have these topics plus some other. Are we there? Well, I was topics plus just going to echo. I think I, I personally be comfortable with that. Uh, I think more public forums, you know, gets us, to, it allows us to say we really went the extra mile to get yeah. Yeah. public input. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm for having less topics and more room in, in those sessions. The only thing I would just flag, and I don't think this is a deal breaker, um, if you're not doing like the big mayoral power turn stuff in the second meeting, you will probably get less people in the second meeting. Barring people being really mad at us about something between now and then, then they all come up to yell at us. Um, but if that's the way it is, I don't think it's a big deal, but just want people to be cognizant of that. And while I gather to Mary's point that we posted this, we should, we should stay with this. I totally agree with you also because 
you don't want the people to hurry to do I'm saying, boy, they're ramming this through, right. and look at all this it's stuff, and geez, I can't even think about this question, and yeah. they can yeah. sit in a half an hour, I think, is fine. If we get 25 or 100 people, they can absorb it much, much better than, you know, just jamming it. But um, no matter what, if, if we run them anyway, like we were just talking before, if you do the heavy subjects first, by the end of the meeting, if you jam them all in, you probably have one person left for the number seven or eight, you know what I mean? Right. So I think two is good. And emphasize the fact that these meetings are public. Come to the meetings and you can, you know, you still have a public comment session, you know, like tonight. Emphasize that so that, you know, uh, not just kind of and then I'll run down right. and I agree with Gail, I don't think you want to rush it, but if I were a betting person, I, I think that the pub, I think the public's more likely to comment once we get a proposed charter out there and there's, there, we made, uh, 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 we've got flesh on the bones, basically. Yeah. This sort of open-ended um, questions, I, I suspect they're going to hang back and watch and see which direction the debate goes, and then they might get mo motivated to comment. But I think there's a good chance that we're not going to have a big turnout, and so it might be nice, you know, if things move on quickly. First or the second, or both. Well, even on the first. Okay. So there might be a way, a way to. I agree. We move, we wouldn't want to rush it if we were short of time. But I, there's, I think there's a good chance we're not going to be short of time. Um, right. Yeah. Um, and this was just a sort of a point of clarification. Uh, if we should stick with the way it was put out there already, does that mean we can't split? The first question, the way we had talked about, and does it mean we can't add the mayor to question two and the, all the things we twiddled around with these questions about? Can we still do that to clarify the, the questions? On top of that? I think that's fine. The text is my text is still right. Right. Sure. Sorry, right. postage. Yeah. Well, because like in the one about compensation, we're adding the mayor. Right. And the mayor wasn't right. in the original. And that's fine. That's we have that little catch-on new business. Right. Race. Okay. Okay. It could be posted tomorrow as a revised. Okay. okay. That's with that added. Well, with, if it were not major changing things, we just right. sort of cleaned up the language. We did. So what are we? So we're leaving the city clerk as question five then, Correct. and forgetting the other Correct. three. Correct. The other, the other one that have the. The absentee the mayor and all that piece is going to get just get kicked okay. because of just the way the, yep. the cards were dealt. The electoral process and the uh, initiative petition referendum will also be kicked, all three of those, plus the other. Okay, yep. that's the second hearing. Are we going to take any other on Tuesday? I would still give a catch all because if people, someone's going to come. Want to say something that's not quite there? You want to give them a shot, yeah. depending on what, what we have for time. You know, depending on how it is. And, you know. I do some question. You talked about some of your some of the people who live there. They want to talk about a new form of government. How are you going to, how are you going to handle that? That's got that, nothing to do with this. That goes with that electoral. No, that goes with number seven. I see is the nomination election election procedures, including the other form of the. Balloting, which is the I vote for my first and my second run choices, run. and the runoff, whatever it is. Run up, right? right. Mm -hmm. So that to me would all be under there. That's where you would put it. So you tell them, sorry, come back next form. Yeah, that, that, that you know, here's. I mean, I think we should have those things written out with a date, to be really right. candid. Um, we try to find a date between now and then to say, here's mm -hmm. the next form. By the way, are going to cover these topics, and anything of the top five, the other will go there as well. Not much they can write in their comments now or come to public comment if any of our meetings. So can you create you're gonna have the list of the five with a rewording. Could you and you have the list of the <laughs> Can you work on the second hearing then? We need to find a date for the second hearing. Do you have that ability to do tomorrow with your timelines? Okay. We need to pin that down right now. I think we need to find out right now that we're all available, kids. Oh, oh okay. But as far as I mean, they, you need language for that right now? No, I think that the language will look just like this one, only with those three questions. This one. Mm -hmm. So you can even answer this. I mean, for those, yes. we got a big turnout, but you get one. I mean, that, that's really good.
Okay. And are, can we then, I mean, we're kind of giving up one of our meetings, so okay. we might want to try to figure out, can we fit in another meeting somewhere for rooms work? If we need it, right? But can we be um, assured that we're not going to do anything else after the 14th before the end of the year? Holiday. Yeah. We're going to. Yeah, we we again. had kicked them into January because they'd be like, I think there's two meeting dates in January the potential. I'd like to say the meeting discussion only because yes. Steve and Tom aren't here, and I don't, you know, I, I, uh, especially with our facilitator since he's sort of needs to be here for decision making process. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not happy to for the dates. So let's just recap. We're going through these five. We're going to go ahead with the publicity. Bill's going to put forward um, for next Tuesday. 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 Next Tuesday's uh, public hearing at the City Council Chamber from 6.30 to 9.30. We are going to cover the five topics. We have five leaders who have agreed to be our leaders in each of those five areas. Bill, Todd, Megan, Maddie, and Tom. Tom's going to love that one. <laughs> um, uh, since, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Tom about that. Um, and the purpose of what you'll have is you'll basically, we will do an introduction, talk about the city charter has it been changed, a little background information, introduce Steve, have Steve make a couple comments, and then we're going to move into these the areas we've highlighted. I'll make sure that we talk about this as a public forum, that we're getting uh, input into certain areas that we want if people have to, the charter and all the information is always posted and we solicit information all the time in all the areas. But tonight we're focusing on these five areas as put forward in the press release and we're going to go through this as number one, number, we're going to reorder them, number one, number two, number three, number four, and Wendy's, or excuse me, the city clerks will be number five. Um, uh, you'll basically have a half hour give or take depending on what it is. I get to play bad cop, those five people get to be there. The other three, I ask you to jump in wherever you feel necessary, especially to help me out when I pass out on the floor. <laughs> um, and we go then, uh, we will then announce that the second hearing on uh, these two topics plus other will be on December 6th from whatever time we have to, you know, the same three hour block if we can get it. Um, we'll find out if cable TV can cover that, that I may or may not be able to but Mary will take care of that for us. And we will have that press release available for people to walk away with as well. If they did get a chance or go home and rethink things and want to comment, they can come back and do it in the other section because we have three, in a three hour meeting, we only have three topics at a half hour each, it's an hour and a half. Introduction will be far shorter and we will have a good hour plus other. And that's great. Yeah, that, that sounds good. absolutely it's perfect. Good. Okay. So I think Gail, you guys are on the right track here. Yeah. Gail and then Mark. Um, I bet you guys talked about this one of the first two meetings that I missed, but I just want to sort of say it anyway because it may be a good thing to say to the public. Um, I remember when I used to have my law office and I would lose a secretary when I was um, hiring a new one. I was always like correcting for the things that were wrong in the just last one. That's not what we're doing here. We need to help people realize that we're really writing what somebody called the city's constitution here and that it, it's really helpful to think about these issues in very broad terms over a long period of time and not only focusing on the individual events that might have caused us to be upset or angry or concerned about certain um, pieces of local government. This is a, a different kind of, uh, kind of set of thoughts. I'm, yeah. saying, I'm not saying this very well, but I think if we help people structure their thoughts that way, they're not, and, and it gives us something to help them come, come away from if they get stuck in places like that, um, that we're really not just fixing bad events that they think happen. Correct. Uh, my, my comment was just that as each of us representing a particular ward, if we could take a couple of these when they come out and just post it in, in key spots uh, within them for the at large person, you're, 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 you're a wild card. <laughs> you have to do every place we go. Uh, 
Todd and Bill. And I was going to say, um, to follow up on Gail's comment, I think the phrase that sort of stuck in my mind since we started was, you know, a charter for the next 100 years. Mm -hmm. And, and that's a way to sort of phrase it. So we're not talking about trying to, we're trying to sort of, how, how would you structure a charter for your grandchildren and yeah, generations to come? So if we need a logo. Thank you. 